Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is my first care video of 2022 and is focusing on these guys right here, the scorpion tailed gecko or Prestorus carteri. One of my very favorite geckos to keep, one of the most charismatic reptiles that you can keep. Now, believe it or not, these guys I have found in all my years of reptile keeping to be the friendliest gecko that I have ever kept and ever worked with, more so even than leopard geckos, believe it or not. As you can see, they are very relaxed. When I put my hand in the enclosure to clean or to feed, more often than not, they hop on my hand of their own free will. And this is what they do. They kind of just hang out. Right now I have a male, that's the bigger one here, and a female. These are adults. They don't get any bigger than this. So that makes them very manageable. What's awesome about these geckos is that while they are primarily nocturnal in activity, they are out all day long. So I see them all the time. They are not shy at all. They're very hardy and very easy to breed. This is a species that deserves way more attention in the hobby. And I'm definitely going to be trying to do that and to get them out there into the, the herpeticulture uh, hobby and industry this year because, man, do they deserve it. So stick with me. Uh, when we come back, I'm gonna teach you everything that I do to keep and breed this wonderful species. I'm Frank Payne, biology teacher, reptile breeder, and former zookeeper. I'm here to share with you my passion and experience working with these beautiful and fascinating animals. Welcome to Living Art. All right, so this is my Prestorus carteri, or scorpion-tailed gecko, enclosure. In this enclosure, we have all of the life stages. We have my adult breeders. There's a male there, a female, another male. Yes, you can keep males together with this species. Very unusual for geckos and for many other species of lizard. There's a nice female there. But then I also have babies there they are my first babies of the year there's three of them i have them in the same habitat as the adults in this open top tupperware i have the sides covered up just you know just to give them a little bit of privacy but then they're open up to the the light and then also look at all these eggs over here they are extremely extremely prolific as you can see i only have two pairs two males and a fee and two females the females are laying approximately one egg a week. Hard to believe, but that's what they're doing and don't seem to be slowing down even though it is the winter and I have cooled them down. It gets pretty cool in my room at night. My, my enclosure is, is quite simple. You, if you're going to keep them as a pet, you can do, definitely do something a little bit more involved. But this works really, really well. It does give them everything they need. They have UV and heat in the form of that Zoomed metal halide light. They have rocks. St uh, stacked up securely on each other that they can climb on. They love to perch up on rocks. They love to get up high and bask and see this female here warming up her belly, which is definitely uh, full of an egg right now. They only lay one egg at a time. And they can get into the crevices of those rocks. And then I have cork barks so they can go above them below it um, if they want to. So they can escape from the UV and the heat if they want. It's a lot cooler on this side under there. Usually they don't, they don't choose to do that. Usually they, they like to stay out and about. I do have a water bowl, of course. I've never seen them drink from the, the water bowl, but it's always there just in case. And then this right here, I do have a misting nozzle. I do have automatic misting in here. That's something that's often overlooked with desert reptiles, but it's something that they uh, often rely on. A morning mist or an evening uh, dew uh, is very natural for desert species, and they do like to lap up the water. When the females lay their eggs, they dig in this uh, sand here. And I purposely only have one spot in the enclosure that's deep enough for them to nest. They like to lay their eggs right up against a rock. And they're very thin shelled, so when I dig through there, I have to be really careful because they can break. To incubate them, you can see how I'm doing it over here. In the same enclosure as the adults, let's keep it easy. Little deli cup that I can see inside of sand in the bottom that I dampen just a little bit to raise the humidity and then the eggs are in little smaller cups which have just dry sand. They're very hard shelled eggs. You don't want to make sure that they don't come into contact with water. And that's it. I keep them in the same enclosure as the adults. I'm a big believer in most circumstances of giving eggs day and night variation just like the adults, just like the, the actual lizards themselves would experience. There they are. 
Again, like I said, I have two males in here. This they do display to each other, and I'll sh I'll uh, edit in some some footage of the males displaying. But that's as far as it goes. There seems to be absolutely no real physical aggression and no intimidation. The males are in perfect health. They have those wonderful, wonderful tails. Look at that. There you go. How incredible is that tail? He might display a little bit. And you can s the females, unfortunately, they came to me with regenerated tails. So they're not quite as cool looking as the male's tails, but that's okay. They're still cute. Look how, oh, there he is. There, oh, there he goes. He's going to show off. Look at me. This is my place. Check me out. He's saying, I'm the king of the castle here. Oh my God. They're so wonderful. Look at that animal go. How can you not love that? That is the cutest thing ever. And they're just so bold, so docile. Man, I cannot recommend these guys enough as pets and as display animals. So for feeding, I, I feed these guys insects only, uh, mostly crickets, sometimes dubia nymphs as well. I feed them Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Um, I do also occasionally feed them smaller stuff too, like fruit flies and bean beetles, especially for the babies, but they really seem to like crickets. They really chase after them day or night. They eat them, um, you know, maybe uh, six insects, uh, appropriately sized insects, no, no bigger than the, between the eyes of the animal's head. Um, and I dust that with Rapashi Calcium Plus at every feeding. You can also use Minerol um, or Earth Pro A from Arcadia. All those supplements work very well. Um, and, and really, that's about it. Keep them hot. I have that metal halide like going. So I mentioned earlier how the females lay one egg a week. Um, I incubate them right in the enclosure where it gets warm. Um, basking temperatures in the 90s, ambient in the 80s, but it gets cool at night in my room, especially in the winter, down to 60. Uh, 65 is very normal for here. I'm, I guarantee they can take it cooler, but that's about what it gets to in my room. And the babies, the eggs, and the adults all seem to thrive uh, in, in, at those temperatures. Um, let it really dry out during the day, but like I said, automatic misting, a little bit of misting uh, at dusk and at dawn is very beneficial to them. That's how they're gonna get most of their moisture. A little bit of a humidity spike, but they do like it nice and hot, bright, white light, UV, definitely a good idea. Um, and that's really about it. They are extremely simple. They're, you know, I'm no expert on them. I've had them less than a year, but I'm doing very well with them, it seems. And man, I just love them. I think that they deserve to be a very popular gecko. And as you can see with all those eggs there, I'm going to be uh, producing quite a few this year and hopefully many more than, than what we see. So uh, definitely check them out. Definitely try them out if you get the chance. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining me, uh, learning about the scorpion-tailed gecko or Pristorus carteri. Um, follow my Instagram, Facebook, website, Living Art by Frank Payne for all of them. I'll be posting plenty of pictures and videos on them and also be offering some for sale in 2022 as well. So again, please uh, do check that out. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, like we all say. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.